Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokhtar. The caretaker Mantri Basar of Kedah, Muhammad Sanusi, Muhammad Noor, is no stranger to controversy. When he is not making derogatory comments about members of the non-Malay and non-Muslim members of the community, he has also been allegedly flouting the law or abusing his powers as Mantri Basar. Now these acts do not bode well for nation building, but Sanusi almost always gets off with just a light rap on the knuckles. He is not a good role model for young Malaysians. He has also got a high disregard for the law of the land, such as the time when he was filmed breaching the terms of the pandemic lockdown by visiting a car showroom and going for a test drive in Bukit Martajam. As is his usual style, Sanusi dismissed the allegations made against him. Treating the caretaker Mantri Basar with kid gloves is not a deterrent, both for him and for others who hold a similar responsible position of authority. Sanusi had ordered the demolition of 100-year-old Hindu temples including those built on land that had not been gazetted. Supremacy of the federal constitution is enshrined in the Rukun Negara, and Article 11 ensures that all Malaysians have the right to profess and practice his religion. So, were any meaningful negotiations conducted and an alternative temple relocation site offered? or compensation given as a compromise measure. Against the mainly Chinese population island of Penang, Sanusi threatened to stop their water supply and he warned the residents of Seberang Prai and Penang that Penang Island still belonged to Kedah. To assert his claim, he said that there was an absence of proper borders between the two states, Penang and Kedah. So, why did Sanusi deliberately cause outrage and feelings of insecurity and fear among the population of Penang? Why did he do this? Despite Muslims being prohibited from any gambling activity, Sanusi closed down legitimate betting shops and 4D lottery outlets. He claimed that these negative activities encouraged social degradation and he ignored warnings by other people, by the experts, that a ban on legal outlets would lead to a rise in illegal betting shops which were unlicensed. He also banned the Hindu festival of Taipusam, racially stereotyped Indians as toddy drinking drunks and he used derogatory terms to describe foreign players in national football teams. In one of his latest postings, he alleged that non-Malays were the most involved in corruption and he claimed that his remarks were true and based on facts. He said that he stood by the accusations of his leader, the past president Hadi Awang, who claimed that non-Muslims and non-Malays were at the root of corruption. As the Mantri Basar of a state, why was Sanusi allowed to make many disgraceful and shameless remarks which would increase tension amongst the different races? Sanusi failed to act like a responsible Muslim leader. So apart from issuing remarks which have insulted the non-Malays and non-Muslims, he has also allegedly been accused of abusing his powers. A Banama report said that last March, the MACC, Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, started an investigation into the misappropriation and abuse of power involving Amintri Basar on the illegal mining of rare earth elements. The large-scale mining activity was reported by several non-governmental organisations 
and residents in Bukit Engang in Sikh. And these, this illegal mining was finally halted by the authorities, but not before the state government had suffered huge losses. The abuse of power also involved an allegation about foreign worker quotas to the Home Ministry. So our question is, why did these serious allegations take five months to emerge yeah, from March to now? More importantly, what is the progress of these investigations? Why is it justice seems to take its time when Malaysian political leaders are implicated? My observation is this. When Sanusi upset many Hindus, Indians and non-Muslims uh, by making racist and derogatory insults, why was there the usual inaction from the authorities and also silence from many politicians? Is it because they do not want to upset the supporters of PAS, whose vote is crucial in the six upcoming state elections? Except for a few, why didn't a majority of the politicians speak out against this injustice? Why didn't the federal government or the police act decisively, especially as Sanusi's divisive comments and acts have the potential to threaten national harmony? Despite the severity of his insults against the non-Malay and non-Muslim community, Sanusi was neither arrested nor charged. However, he was only punished when he insulted the Sultan of Slango, when he had the audacity then to cry out about a lack of freedom of speech in Malaysia. Can you imagine that? Multicultural Democratic Malaysia cannot be allowed to have two tiers of punishment. Equality before the law must be preserved. Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.